Hello friends. Today we're going to make some smothered pork chops. And Chris's grandmother used to make these all the time when we when she was living and I loved them. And so uh, I'm going to make some today and get my flour out. You're going to need some flour, of course your pork chops, some seasonings that you want. And um, I'm using self-rising flour in this. And then you're going to need uh, whatever you want to fry your pork chops in just a little bit. Now, I'm going to fry mine in bacon grease just because we like bacon grease. And I keep my bacon grease in this little pot here. See, it says grease on it. And we just pour it in there. It's got a little strainer in it. We got it, I got it at an antique store somewhere. I think it was a dollar. <laughs> it's actually a junk store we have close by. And so I am going to just... Heat that up. The way you can do it is you just heat it up on your burner just for a few seconds. And then you can pour your, your grease in the um, skillet. And the skillet I'm using is, was my nanny's. So it's a, she got it for a wedding present. And it's, it's a good 60 something years old. So it's good and seasoned. So that's probably heated enough. See, yep. I'm probably gonna put about three or four tablespoons in here if you wanna measure it. Now you can use butter. Need to heat up just a little bit more. You can use butter. You can use oil, just whatever you wanna use. But I think this adds some flavor to it. So just, that's probably good. I love this little pot. Okay, yeah, about three or four tablespoons. Probably about more like four. And make sure you got a lid for your skillet or whatever you're gonna cook it in. This skillet obviously does not have a lid. So I'm just gonna use an old bacon or pizza pan. Okay, so we're gonna season our flour. Let me just make sure you can see. I'm gonna season it with uh, some garlic and some salt and some pepper. Now, I'm going to also season my pork chops with the same. I love to season my meat separate, okay? Because that way you know you got um, seasoning on your, on your meat. And these are just uh, bone-in pork chops. Make sure you do both sides. Season both sides. And you're also going to need a chopped onion. I'm using a fairly large one because we like onions. If you like mushrooms, you can also put mushrooms in this. Now, when grandmother would do it, she would make her gravy with water. But I'm going to use chicken broth. Okay, so that's going to be the only difference in that. Okay, I'm going to turn my skillet on. Let that start getting hot because we're going to cook these pork chops for about, oh, I would say three or four minutes on each side. You don't, don't worry about getting them done because they're going to get done when they, when they cook in the gravy. Now, I buy the granulated um, chicken broth stuff. So, I'm just going to put one in there and we'll fill this up. This is a little over two cups of water. And we'll use that for our, for our gravy. Okay, we could probably go ahead and start flouring up our chops. We've been working nonstop over at Christopher's new house. And I haven't been cooking. We could come in so tired. And then I also had to get all my Christmas down. So that was a big old job. Usually takes me about four or five days to put it up and at least two days to take it down. So but I got it all down and today's a rainy, dreary day. So I'm glad I got that done before all of that. Okay, this is starting to sizzle over here. So let's get, let me turn it down just a little bit. I probably got it on probably a um, 
low medium. Okay. So let's put these in there. They're good and floured. It's really good to season your, your meat a little ahead of time, but obviously I didn't get that done. So let's do this one. and flour uh, instead of plain flour just kind of makes the crust especially if you're actually going to be frying like some chicken or or some chicken fried steak or something like that it kind of makes it more light so that's what I happen to have in that in that canister everything in my kitchen pretty much has a sentimental value it might not be the more most beautiful like this canister here but um this is the canisters that my mom had when we were growing up. So I asked for them one day and she gave them to me. <laughs> I remember lots of pies, lots of dinners and all of that being uh, cooked out of those canisters. I got all, all of them, the sugar and everything. Okay, so we got our pork chops in there and you can hear that sizzling. I'm gonna get rid of the pork chop plate. Wash my hands really quick. I'm gonna keep that flour though because I'm gonna use that flour to thicken my gravy. You wanna do that because it's already seasoned. Okay. And I'll let you see what these are looking like down in the skillet. Get me some tongs. Like I said, we've been really busy. Chris is feeling better. You know, him and Caleb had COVID and um, they're, built, they're feeling better. He actually, today is his first day back to work. So we're thankful for that. He's still coughing quite a bit. Caleb's already got rid of his cough, but it's hanging on to Chris. Let me show you what this looks like down in here. It's just a bubbling. And like I said, we're gonna let that cook for about three or four minutes on each side. I believe these are probably ready to come out. They've been in here for about three or four minutes on each side. Just, until they're totally lightly brown, okay? And then we're gonna pull them out. And we're gonna put I'm just doing three tonight because Christopher's working in Oklahoma all week. So we just have the three of us working. Okay, now I'm going to put in my onion, a large onion that I diced up. You can turn my fire down just a little bit. And over here I've just got some potatoes. Now, grandmother never put potatoes in hers, but I like to put potatoes in mine. And then you're just going to kind of try to deglaze this uh, skillet with these onions. Everybody needs a good flat wooden spoon. Let me put my little pot, pot thing to keep it. And you want to make sure you scrape all that good stuff off so it doesn't burn. Okay? Now, we're going to start, we're going to turn our fire down and we're going to start putting some of this flour in this pot. Okay, and I would say probably, since we used about three or four tablespoons, we're going to use about three or so tablespoons of that flour. We're just going to start working it all in there. And we'll bring you over here so you can actually see down in here. Okay. So just work it all in there. And it's going to look gunky, but don't worry about that. It's going to be okay. You just want to cook, cook this flour taste out. Just like that. Now when we add that, let me put you back. Now when we add our chicken broth, it's going to thicken up. Real, real good. If you keep, if you keep your consistencies the same, you will, um, you won't have to worry about thickness. Okay. Now this is getting the starting to kind of get brown. We want it to be a brown color. Okay. 
Otherwise, you'll have cream gravy. We want it to be a little brown, so it'll be a brown gravy. Okay, you don't have to worry about getting your onions translucent or anything like that because you, uh, this is gonna cook. I'm just gonna put a little bit more flour in there. Just not even probably a tablespoon, just a little bit. We wanna, okay. Now, we're gonna slowly, you wanna make sure you have enough flour at the beginning because if you don't, you're gonna have, you can't add your flour later, you'll just have a big old mess. Okay, we're gonna slowly start putting in our chicken broth. It already smells delicious. You got the chicken, you got the bacon. If you don't have any bacon grease on hand, just fry two or three pieces of bacon. If you want to use bacon grease. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pour the rest of that in there. I'm gonna let you see it again. It's watery right now, but it's gonna get thick. And when it does, start separating all those onions. And when it does, it gets to the thickness of a gravy. Then we're gonna turn our fire down really low. And we're gonna put in our pork chops. And we're gonna put in our uh, potatoes. Okay, let, I may have turned my fire down a little too low. Turn it back up. But you do wanna work those lumps out. And while that's doing, I wanna add all, we love garlic around here, so I'm gonna add, we buy this minced garlic in the produce section, I'm gonna add a good tablespoon to that. That's how Chris knew he had COVID as he was cooking something and uh, he couldn't smell the garlic. And he called me because I was down with mama down in Houston. He goes, I can't smell the garlic. Something's going on. He felt fine that, at that point. This was like the first or so day. Okay, so, but I can smell the garlic. <laughs> so this is starting to get thick. And I'm gonna add some more salt and pepper. And you can just do that to taste. Now I'm gonna show you again. I know I'm going back and forth today, but we'll show you again the, how, how that's starting to look thick. See how that's starting to look thick? That's what we want, just like that. Let me get you back on here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, let me just set you over here. Okay. I'm going to turn my fire down real low. And we're going to place our pork chops down in the gravy. like this. Chris's grandmother was an awesome cook and she showed me so many neat things. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit of gravy on top too. Now, if you feel like it's getting too thick, it won't hurt it to add a little bit of a uh, more chicken broth, but just don't add too much. Just just do a little at a time, okay? So I've got it covered up now, and I'm gonna put my potatoes, and I did um, red potatoes, and I have about three here because we have three pork chops. And I'm just gonna do this, just like this. Now you can add a little parsley or something pretty on top if you want to, but I I think I have some, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Maybe in I'll build in a little bit. But I'm gonna cover this up. Like I said, make sure you have something to cover it up with. And it's gonna cook 
for about 30 minutes until your meat if you if you're one that likes to do the temperature on your meat you need to needs to be about 145 or so okay and uh you just cover it up forget about it turn it down low so it don't scorch that steam right there will help it and they're going to turn it all the way down just like that and we'll be back in a little bit okay i think it's done it's been cooking for about 35 40 minutes and the potatoes are soft and the meat is tender so i'm going to spring it over here now i did check it every once in a while and some little here and a little there thought it might need a little just a little bit of water so i i would add a little bit of water um as i thought necessary and i checked the bottoms just to make sure it wasn't going to get too done on the bottom so we're going to put it here on our plate put some you can either pour your gravy in a in a gravy dish or you can um put it in Put it here on top. I'm going to put my potatoes here on the side. And I did find my parsley. And we're fixing to go to the table. Babe, you want to check that corn? Make sure it's... We're having some cream style corn. I wish it was from our garden. We already ate all that up. Okay, now I'm just going to pour some gravy over it just like that and then i'm gonna let you see it put some parsley on top the parsley is just for looks but it does make it pretty this is a good meal for tonight with this cold nasty rain okay let me let you see how this looks So, don't that look good? Look at that gravy on there. It's just delicious looking. And it's going to be just as delicious tasting as it looks. Meet you at the table. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for this food, keeping us today. Bless it to our bodies. Help us to be thankful for it. In your name we ask. Amen. Amen. this corn. Tastes like grandmother's? It's good. No. It's been so long I can't really remember. I know. Miss her. Taylor don't remember grandmother. Barely. It's delicious y'all. I knew it would be. Everything she made was good. Thanks for coming back with us today. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.